Okay. It says I should let everyone know they're being recorded. So we are now recording. Welcome again, everyone. We're so glad to have you here for um, this uh, lunch and learn session, mentoring through a DEIB lens, part one. Again, part two will be June 26th at noon. Um, before we hand things over to our panelists and facilitator today, um, I wanted to ask David Brown and Stephanie Martin, who co-lead our Maryland Leaders of Color Network, if they could introduce themselves and share a bit about the network um, and who we are and what we do. So, um, David, would you go first for us? Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today on our webinar. My name is David Brown. I'm the Vice President and Chief Information and Equity Officer at Edenwald Senior Living. I'm where I've been for 11 years um, this month, so I'm excited about that. And the Leaders of Color, um, I'm the Vice Chair along with Stephanie, and the Leaders of Color, Color is a professional networking group um, for leaders of color who are looking to enhance, enrich, and, you know, I would say just being a professional networking group with each other um, where we can share ideas, mm -hmm. enhance our organizations, and like this webinar, how to be a mentor, how to be a mentee. There's some people, you know, who are looking to be mentees and some who are looking to be, to be mentors um, that may be a leader of color. And allies are also very welcome in this group. Um, and, it's the, and we do this at a national level. And we're also doing it at a state level, which is why we have the Maryland Leaders of Color. And I'm also the co vice chair of the Leaders of Color at the national level. And M Monica Costa, who is on this call, is the chair of the Leaders of Color National. And we're having several events coming up, and I encourage you all to join them, whether you're a leader of color or an ally. Um, they are going to be very informative, and it's great camaraderie amongst everyone. Um, and I'll turn it over to Stephanie, who can introduce herself. Hi everyone, I'm Stephanie Martin. I'm the Communications and Development Manager at Keswick Multicare. Um, I think David did a great job of um, explaining what we are, who we are and what we do. And um, I believe we're also here to be supportive um, of anyone who's trying to better their organization, better their community. Um, so, yeah. Thank you so much. This this group would not exist if it wasn't for um, David and Stephanie and the many other individuals who have helped really get this started here in Maryland. Uh, Maryland was the first leading age state affiliate to kind of start a state network, which is really exciting. And um, we just started, it's not even been a year ago, that the group kind of formally started. And um, we've done a variety of different learning opportunities, networking events, and excited to keep that going. I also just want to give a quick um, plug for our Leading Age Maryland annual conference, which is on May 14th and 15th. And we'll have a couple of really great um, Leaders of Color Network events at our conference. If you'd like to know more about those opportunities, um, you can reach out to me, Allison, um, and also visit our website, leadingagemaryland.org, to learn more about the conference. I'm going to go ahead and hand things over to Jen. Um, Dr. Jennifer Jimenez Marania has been um, working with Leading Age Maryland and many of our members over the past couple of years and um, continues to support our work to help our members as they're working to create um, more inclusive organizations and communities. So thank you, Jen, so much for being here today and facilitating. Of course. Good. Oh, I was going to say good morning, but good afternoon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good afternoon, everyone. Um, so I have the privilege of um, serving as a diversity consultant for, for several organizations and particularly uh, Le uh, Leading Age Maryland. And I also have the privilege of moderating today's panel discussion. Uh, today's topic around mentoring actually came from the Leaders of Color Network of Maryland when we asked folks, what topics are you interested in? What would help us grow um, and really meet your needs as part of the Leaders of Color Network? Network. And mentoring was a, a big topic. And so that's what brings us together today uh, talking about uh, mentoring. And I, I want to also mention the word sponsorship because you're going to hear um, aspects of that from our uh, uh, from our panelists today. So as we know, mentoring is really, um, you know, folks who might share knowledge um, and guidance with us, uh, mentors who might share that knowledge and guidance. Uh, and that can be Sometimes it is more formalized and sometimes it's not so formalized. When we 
use the word sponsorship. And like I said, you'll, you might hear some of that as well because there can be overlap between the two. Um, a sponsor is someone who actively promotes growth and provides access to opportunities um, at work and or advocates for career advancement. So a mentor might be someone you talk to about stuff. A sponsor is someone that says, hey, I'm going to talk to so-and-so about you, yes. you know, being interested in this position. And, you know, like it, there's a more active role that a sponsor plays. So I just want to clarify that because oftentimes we interchange the two um, because mentors are also sponsors in our lives. All right. So uh, I want to turn this over because we have two um, amazing panelists today. And um, back to what Allison said, we had envisioned this larger panel. And as we were talking to the panelists, we're like, this conversation is too rich for us to have so many panelists for just an hour call. We're going to have we're going to need two parts. Or we're going to need more time. And so we we do have two parts um, for sure. And today um, we have with us Sarah Moore and Brandon Moss. And I know that I will not do justice to um, their wonderful introduction. So I'm going to have them introduce themselves. And because let me tell you, um, they were chosen for a reason. The We had an amazing conversation in preparation for this, um, this panel discussion. And um, you're not only going to hear in their introductions all that they have done and, and the different um, you know, things that they've been involved with, but also through our conversation today, hearing about their experiences as mentors, as well as being mentors. So let me start with Sarah. Sarah, if you don't mind introducing yourself. Sure. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, I'm Sarah Moore. I am the co-founder and chief operating officer of W. Lawson, um, and I'm the board treasurer of our not-for-profit branch, Communities of Inclusion and Belonging. Um, our mission at W. Lawson is to promote equity and aging. We do that through consulting, thought leadership, community development. <clears throat> and um, we have a fellows program that we're running right now called the Longevity and Inclusion Alliance. Um, and um, so we're doing a lot of different work. Uh, my background is actually, my degree is in landscape architecture. Uh, my focus was in community planning um, when I studied that, and I've done a lot of project management in a lot of different fields. Um, a lot of those have been male-dominated fields, so I, I have a lot of experience being um, sort of an outsider. Um, and I'm, um, I guess, just happy to be here talking with you all about mentorship today. Thank you, Sarah. Brandon. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Brandon Moss. I am uh, currently regional manager here at CSI Support and Development. We develop and manage affordable senior housing. We have about 1,300 units here. Um, I'm a, I kind of we develop and manage affordable senior housing in California, Michigan, Massachusetts, here in Maryland. I run the Maryland office, and I'm also uh, vice chair on the Leading Age Maryland uh, Board of Directors. Awesome. All right, so we're going to start with our first question, and, and I want to um, frame this by, you know, recognizing we have, uh, you know, 20 plus folks here on this call. This really is a conversation. And so um, as we are talking, I do welcome, you know, folks to, you know, as, as follow up to, to engage with the conversation as well. So, um, you know, it's not, no, you can't ask questions right now. If there's something that you're curious about, feel free to put that in the chat or raise your hand. And once again, this is, it's conversational. We're going to have, um, enjoy this, you know, this conversation today. So, Sarah, we'll start with you. Your own mentorship experiences, how have they shaped you in your career? Sure. Um, so, I have been both a mentor and a mentee many times in my career. Um, I would say that being from a working class background um, and being a woman in a male dominated field for a long time, um, I needed a lot of support in learning how to navigate my career landscape. Um, so I would say that in my earlier career, being a mentee and having people who were there to, um, to help me build my soft skills as well as my hard skills, um, I learned from my mentors things like conflict resolution and negotiating and um, work-life balance, things like that. Those are things that I would have really struggled to, to um, figure out on my own. 
Um, so having people there to guide me, um, both people who shared an identity with me um, and those who didn't was very important for me. And then when I came to a place of feeling like, well, I have some knowledge that I could share with others and help bring other people to the table that maybe feel like I used to feel. Um, that was really important for me. And of course, I felt in the beginning like, um, who am I to mentor somebody else? What do I know? But um, I had to sort of get over that feeling and just do what I could to offer support and guidance to, to people that I thought could benefit from it. Thank you, Sarah. And I love, um, I heard empathy, right? So wanting to help folks because you know what that's like, you know what it, where, where you've been and needed um, that mentorship. And I also heard a little bit about imposter syndrome, right? Mm -hmm. Not feeling like, who am I to be? And, and I want to acknowledge that, you know, as folks who have been mentored and have, um, served as mentors that sometimes we really need to get over ourselves with that, right? Because if it yeah. wasn't for folks mentoring us and if it wasn't for our mentorship, you know, we wouldn't be where we are today. And so so thank you for bringing up those um, themes. Brandon. Uh, yeah, well, um, I, I think I would echo a lot of things that Sarah said. I think for me, you know, I haven't been in a position where I've said, hey, I want a mentor per se. But now that I think about it, actually, I kind of was. When I applied for the job, at the company I work at now. I've been here 18 years. I started uh, at an entry level management role um, and I've had this is my fourth job here. Uh, so I've been, I guess, what's that three promotions? Uh, but basically what happened was I knew I wanted to be in this field. And I remember putting on my cover letter that I was looking for a mentor <laughs> when I was applying for jobs. And I had um, and my my the boss that hired me, regional manager uh, Cheryl, she uh, I think was looking for a mentee, <laughs> and so uh, we met and we, I had the longest interview in the company history. Thank you very much. Uh, we just we just got we really hit it off immediately. We were able to talk about a lot of different important topics, and um, and she became my boss, but also kind of my mentor and really a sponsor as well. We talked about that sponsorship. I don't know if that am I if I should do this later, but is now okay. But the sponsorship concept is is important too. So the mentor from mentorship piece for me was, uh, like Sarah said, teaching the skills. Like how do you how do you organize your files? How do you do this particular role? What's what's the lay of the land as you're heading into these different meetings or situations with that, that are unfamiliar? And so that's kind of that mentorship. Let me kind of bring you along and kind of teach you what I know and how this works. Um, and also kind of challenge you to kind of bring your own kind of message to the conversation. I think that's critical in the mentorship uh, that that you get to bring your own voice. It's not you do it my way exactly. It's uh, how, how do I help bring out your best? Um, and the sponsorship element was uh, when it was time for when there was opportunities for advancement, opportunities for growth, opportunities to gain um uh, credentials and take classes things of that nature having somebody who stood up and said this guy should be able to go um let, let's send him we we want you in this meeting with the c-suite because we love your ideas like having that person to pull you uh into those opportunities and um and advocate uh it was critical um for one of the times i got promoted there was there was some question whether it was the right fit and she stood up and said no i'm telling you this is this is going to work um and uh, both for me and for <laughs> the higher us in the organization, uh, providing that encouragement. And it did, it worked beautifully. It ended up being a great fit. And so um, very grateful for that kind of mentorship. And there's been other mentors. That's probably the one that had the most impact on my career. And we still are in touch today. I still call and say, hey, what do you think about this? This is what's going on. Uh, so that's, that's something that um, I'm very grateful for. Wow, thanks, Brandon. I, I love those stories, especially around um, so around the ask, right? Just being able to say, look, I'm actually looking for a mentor. Um, you know, how many of us kind of might be shy or un, you know, uncertain as to whether you can just go there and, and ask of that, ask for that? And I love that you did it. And boom, there you go. If, you know, someone who says, yes, absolutely, I would love to mentor you. Um, you also brought up a great point about how mentorship, it's not a one-way street. It's really reciprocal. And yes, we're 
they're learning a lot from our mentors and they're sharing knowledge and their experiences with us. And as mentees, you know, our mentors are learning um, as well. And so I, I love that um, you brought that up, that reciprocal relationship. Um, and then, of course, the sponsorship piece, somebody not just, you know, guiding you and saying, hey, here's, you know, think about this or let me tell you about that. But Oh, he is the right fit. No, you. we did make the right decision. Oh, yeah, you need to look at this person, right? Like, to be able to step up, say, um, stand up, right, um, for us, that that's huge. You know, for somebody to step up for us, that that is huge. So, beautiful themes. Um, you did, you answered this um, already in terms of um, career advancement, but I want to see if there's anything you want to add to that. And then also, Sarah, for you, too, talking about mentorship and its importance to career advancement. Brandon, anything else you want to include? Um, yeah, actually, I would I would say one of the things that I got out of my mentorship was uh, uh, knowing when to when when to push and when to kind of hold back a bit. So there was times when I was like, all right, well, now that I know this, I'm going to go do this and this and this and this and this. And they're like, oh, <laughs> bring, and they tell me to bring it down. You're not quite there yet. And I remember being a little frustrated. I was like, what do you mean? I can't believe I'm not here. I, I, so I'm certainly ready for this. And it's like, well, you, you, you've been here less than a year. I don't know that you're ready <laughs> for this uh, for this massive uh, this massive thing over here. It's like and and for me, I'm you know, I'm raring to go. Um, and so I, looking back uh, very quickly, I realized, wow, you know what? That actually was the right decision. Um, very grateful for that delay to build my skills and my experience so that when that opportunity came up, I was ready. And I can think of two separate instances where that occurred. One was when I was going to get some additional credentialing. I wasn't ready yet. I didn't have the I, I wasn't in that in that place yet, but I just you know wanted all the credentials. And then a the second time when um, I actually got turned down for a promotion and I thought it was like I, at first I was like really upset. And actually, again, looking back, I was thrilled. I was totally not ready yet. And that mentor was able to kind of say, no, this isn't it for you. And then six months later, another opportunity came up in a different role that was absolutely the right next role for me. So those are just critical, critical things. So we talk about advancement and it's not just about getting the next big thing. It's also about getting it in the right timing, in the right order and having people who are able to say, eh, maybe you're not quite there yet. Um, I think it's an important piece. Wow, thank you, T timing. Right. Mm -hmm. And having somebody be able to talk you through that. Because we want what we want. Right. We're all here because mentorship is a topic of interest. You know, and I'm going to you know, say, hey, this probably has something to do with our desire for career advancement. But timing. Th thank you for bringing up that theme. Sarah, what about you? Career advancement, mentorship. Yeah, um, I have had some experiences very similar to Brandon and um, being very gung ho about wanting to push forward and do as much as I can do in as short of a time as possible. Um, so I've had I've had mentors that advise me on what skills I could learn, what additional training I could do. And um, there's a lot of times when you don't know what you don't know. And so having someone there to explain to you, um, you know, this this strategic plan that we're trying to follow, you fit into this in such and such way. Um, and the best value that you can bring to us is by building these skills and then you'll be ready to do more. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that timing aspect of it is very critical um it's it's so helpful to have someone that can guide you there and that helps you feel like you're still bringing value you're doing a lot and you're doing a great job and just because you're not ready for the next step doesn't mean that we don't value what you're doing um so i think that 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 is a, something i wouldn't have thought of to mention so thank you brandon that that's a really good point um but i think something also that people um, maybe don't think of, in addition to the hard skills, like I mentioned before, the soft skills and how how you manage um, manage your time better, how you stay organized better, things like that. I really benefited from with my mentors, um, and that's something that I try to pass on now. Um, it's not just the the hard skills that are a part of you know like when you apply for a job and you you mention 
all of the softwares that you know how to use. It's it's the other things as well. It's can you resolve conflicts? Um, are you easy to get along with? Can mm -hmm. you um, make things happen when they need to happen? So um, I've definitely benefited from that and tried to pass that on as well. Yeah, thanks for um, distinguishing those things, right? Because there's overall skill sets, but there are, you know, quote unquote soft skills and hard skills to um, to practice and, and learn more about. I love you brought something up that, that I want to just kind of mention. And it was when you mentioned you don't know what you don't know, this level of also humility, right? With and just kind of being humble with, OK, let me take a step back here. And the, it, just because a position it didn't work out doesn't mean, you know, that, you know, you're not good enough. And, and having a mentor be able to say, hey, no, that's not what this, this has to do. Um, that's not, not what this is about, but it's also about A, B, C and D, right? Somebody you trust, someone who you can hear, someone who says that in the most loving and caring way and wants to see you succeed, right? So I, I love that. And then just um, time management, right? Organize your time. Like, absolutely. Sometimes we step into roles and it can be overwhelming with the new, um, you know, responsibilities, new skill sets, et cetera, and, and the roles that mentors can play with helping us navigate that and make more sense of that. So th thank you for that, for all those themes. All right. So uh, let's talk about what's what's in it for you. <laughs> um, and not so much in those words, but when you think about what is the, what is your personal benefit? How do you benefit for from being a mentor? You know, what does that look like um, on, on how you mentor others and, and what's your why? What's your my, why with mentorship and mentoring others? Either what Sarah, Brandon, who wants to go first? Sarah, go ahead. OK, <laughs> um, so I would say I mentor because ultimately I think it's the right thing to do. Um, it promotes equity, um, but I also get a lot out of it myself. There's a lot of people who are it's not always the loudest voices or the most well represented people who have the best ideas. Um, there are a lot of people who kind of are on the sidelines or out of the spotlight that have bright minds and new exciting ways of doing things and um, their voices need to be amplified and they need to be given the tools and the support um, to really shine and i have found that it's those people that kind of come out of the shadows and and step into the spotlight a little bit more th that have needed more support have had some of the best ideas and um, are some of my favorite people that I've ever worked with. So I think that, you know, my my selfless answer is that it's the right thing to do. But my the the answer that's a little bit more mm -hmm. selfish and that benefits mm -hmm. me more is that right there are people who um, who need that support and who are going to give so much to the organization or to the cause. Thank you, Sarah. Beautiful. Um, I also, you know, you, you mentioned the term equity, um, and, and I think that uh, for, and I'm, I, I know that there are other groups too, right? But there, so there are for people of color, for different groups, that there are groups who have not had some the same experiences of, as others, and so that mentorship is especially important. I love how you said, you know, for folks um, to kind of bring them out of the shadows. Right. How many of us may have felt like that in our own careers when we knew our own potential, but just weren't sure how to help that shine. And there was that somebody who could help us shine and, and share all of the ideas and things that could, you know, that would help the organization thrive. So thank you, Sarah. Brandon. Yeah, I think Sarah had a lot of really good points regarding that. I mean, um, obviously, I like the right the right thing to do piece of it. And I do think uh, we get a lot out of it ourselves. M myself. Uh, I love to share and I love to teach. I was just, so I, I just get out of the opportunity to kind of, hey, I got this information, I'd love for you to know it. So you can kind of use it and hopefully it benefits you. So for me, that's just something I get really excited about. Um, I would like to say about mentorship that, um, and I don't know if this matters to anybody, but I, I, I've i mentored folks kind of regardless of age. Like there's folks who are older than me that I've been a bit of a mentor to people younger than me. It just, it just depends on a lot of different dynamics, but um, I like to see people um, continue to grow and get closer to their potential. 
I, I I believe in as a as a leader of an organization, uh, at least at this portion of the organization. I'm always thinking about how do you create a growth organization? How do you create an organization where you know, everybody gets an opportunity to grow, in, including me? Right. So like I want to grow so that I can help other people to grow. And sometimes that's grow up or they grow out. Right. And that's OK. Like if people leave uh you know the organization i hope i've mentored them to the place where they're going someplace where they're on a, a better trajectory than when they got here um that's just kind of how i look at it from that perspective from the workplace perspective um you know outside the workplace it's similar concepts i just if someone's got uh everyone's got potential i love to kind of see people uh continue to grow and and, and build and, and and learn i think it just makes everybody better um whether it's in the organization in our communities in general uh, I, I, the value to me is uh, I, I just don't think there's any downside to all of us getting better, to all of us growing and getting stronger in a bunch of different areas. So I love it. I I, I want everybody to get better. So to like being here today is about that. That's, that's why I get excited about it. It's like I want everybody to whatever your next level is. I hope you get there. Let, let me know what I can do to help you. We'd love we'd love to see that happen. Um, that's part of, I, I think, uh, the value that we bring. Well, thank you, Brandon. I, lo I love that because it's about us, right? How, how do we support each other? Um, I, I love what you said. Like, you want everybody to grow, right? Don't we want that? Not just of ourselves, but each other. And how can we help each other with that? I don't tweet or X, but I, you said something. You said, well, people either grow up or grow out. And I was like, ooh, that's good. Good. <laughs> I love that. People grow up or grow out. So what are we doing in our organizations to help people grow? Because if they don't, if they're not able to grow there, then it's growing out. And maybe that's the next step, right? That just is the next step and that's okay. But I, I love that vision, watching a tree just grow up and then also kind of branch out. So yeah, beautiful, beautiful. All right, so let's talk about, you know, when we're in these mentor-mentee relationships, how do we set clear expectations? And you know, are there stories that where you kind of learn? Maybe oh, maybe we should have set some expectations here, or actually, it was you know, this is how we rolled with it. So talk to me about how did you set clear? How do you set clear expectations for mentors and mentees? I was going to let Sarah go Brandon. first, but she's muted. Am I am, am, I, am I going <laughs> first now? Is that what just happened? No, no. Why? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors now. Sarah, are you ready? You want to go? I don't know, Brandon. Do you want to go first? I can go. Uh, no, go for it. You got it. Okay. <laughs> um, I think it largely depends on the situation uh, and the preferences of the people involved. Um, some people prefer things to be a little bit more formal. I think if you are looking for a mentor and you're asking someone to mentor you, um, the onus is on you to try to establish that um, and say, would you like to have weekly meetings or monthly meetings? Um, would you like it to be more structured or would you like to just chat when we have a chance to chat? Um, I think it also depends on, are you in the same organization, in the same office? Can you pop across the hall and talk to someone whenever you want to? Or do you need to set up a Zoom call to talk to that person? Um, <clears throat> And that kind of actually leads me into mentioning that I think that you can have more than one mentor at a time. You can have mentors within your organization. You can have mentors that are outside of your organization. So I think um, just being intentional about it and making sure that you are making it as easy as possible for your mentor to donate their time to you. Um, is is what you have to keep in mind and that can look like a lot of different things um, i tend to need to have meetings scheduled or i'm just going to forget and it's going to go on and it might be weeks before i talk to someone so i i like to i even do it with my friends i say let's talk on friday i'm putting you in my schedule so that i don't forget so for me that's my preference um, but i know a lot of other people are more casual about it and um, so i think it could be any number of things, but if you have some intentionality about it, um, you can't go wrong with that. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, so it just depends, right? And it sounds like it's really about communication. You know, how yeah. are you, you know, what is the, what are you two going to decide? 
Yeah, and then I love that you use the term intentionality, right? Being intentional around the relationship and, and how it flows. Yeah. Brandon. Yeah, Sarah, Sarah said all the stuff I was going to say, but better. So I'll repeat it anyway, <laughs> though. <laughs> no, I, I agree with that. I do like the intentionality piece of it. And I do like um, I do like scheduling things, if you can. Um, and it doesn't have to be mega formal, but just blocking out time in the calendar is really critical. Um, and I've, I've had mentors where, you know, we we have you know, like lunch like once a quarter. You know, so I just we just put it on the calendar. Let's let's work it out and then we'll sit down and just talk through different stuff. Those are great, great, great conversations um, where and these are outside of my organization where, where I'm sitting down and, you know, I'm sharing my thoughts. They're sharing their thoughts. And uh, I think I'm getting the majority of the value out of that conversation. But that's OK, because <laughs> I was the mentee. Um, uh, so I love I love putting it on the schedule. Um, and then the other thing that I really love is, at least for me, a lot of my a lot of my uh, mentorship opportunities and experiences have been very organic. Um, you know, to me, it's 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 a you kind of have to. It's easier if you're in the same area, organization, project, uh, you know, whatever the situation is. Um, maybe you're part of a, an outside organization. Maybe it's a volunteer role. Maybe whatever the situation is, uh, you know, being kind of in proximity is always critical, um, I think. And so then from there, some of that mentorship just happens just naturally being a part of the same kind of group, moving in the same direction. And then you can kind of build the intentionality kind of off of that. Thank you, that's that's really great. Um, you So I love scheduling, right? We are so busy. <laughs> And I know for me, if something's not on my schedule, I, oops, you know, like I, it has to be there so you can see it. So I, I love that. That goes along with the intentionality piece. Um, and you talked about how mentoring relationships can be organic. So absolutely, it doesn't have to be, can you be my mentor? Can you be my mentee? But sometimes it's just organic based on proximity. Um, but let's say that, and like you did, Brandon, um, you're like, no, I, I want a mentor. Like, I'm going to put that mm -hmm. here in my application. I'm just going to speak it and boom, you know, somebody shows up. Um, how do you ask? You know, what, what does that look like in, term, uh, in terms of the ask? Um, if you're looking for a mentor, how do you ask someone? Because maybe there's someone in your organization here. You're like, man, I could really, I think they'd be a great mentor. You know, do, so what does that ask look like? Men T. Jennifer, you cut out for a moment. Already, but, you know, if there's something else. Thank you, Allison. How can yeah. you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay, great. Thank you. But we missed the last okay. part of your question. All right. So I think I got the gist though. Okay. You just to pick it up from there. Um, <laughs> you got this? Okay, Brandon, take it away. <laughs> Well, I, I, I do like the question of, you know, kind of how do you how do you get started with it? Um, and I think it, it goes back to creating proximity. So there's a couple of different scenarios. One is, uh, uh, well, I, I would say take the opportunities that are available. So, for instance, I had a situation where um, someone who I kind of wanted to mentor me, I, I knew I wanted to move in this direction. And this is outside of my organization. I was um, I knew I wanted to kind of move in this kind of property management direction of you know, somebody who was kind of higher up in um, in the industry who I just, you know, fortunately was kind of able to be, be around a little bit. Uh, they offered a kind of a special uh, tutoring class <laughs> and I was like, oh, my gosh, that's perfect. And I just I mm -hmm. called immediately as a when can we do this? Like talking to the secretary, I'd love to, you know, let, let, let's let's do it. I'm thinking there's gonna be like 30 people in this class, this is a large group. Uh, there was like three people. I was like, what? what's everybody doing? Like, this is the, this is the person who's like, who's offering like literal, like mentorship right now. And three people scheduled something. I was like, that's insane to me. Uh, so I was, I was just shocked, but I, I was, I was thrilled. Cause that meant I got a ton of FaceTime with this person. Um, and that, and that was the impetus for our then personal relationship. So we would then meet for lunches and things of that nature, but it all started because I jumped on the project. Um, I jumped on the offer. A situation here, here, here at here at the company where, you know, there's a there's a higher up person who had a shared. I have this vision for something, you know, that I want to fix or improve in the company. 
Uh, I called him up and said, hey, you know what? I, I have that same passion. I'd love to be a part of whatever group you're putting together for that. And they said, great, you're leading the group. <laughs> I was like, okay. Uh, so now I'm getting the FaceTime with the higher up person because I, I signed up and agreed to jump on that project and work on that. I mean, so that's, I think there's ways like that where if there's opportunities, just jump on them um, to get to to get to get in that person's kind of in, in that person's kind of view into that circuit and then, you know, start start the relationship from there. Um, and then for me, um, you know, if you feel comfortable, you, you start to build that relationship kind of organically. But then I, I just I'm a little more kind of outgoing than most I would uh, sometimes. So I, I just actually just said, hey, would you be OK grabbing lunch sometime? I'd love to buy lunch and just kind of chat for a little bit like that's taking it to the next level. And if they say no, OK, great. Well, I appreciate it. <laughs> you know, it, it's been fun, you know, hope hope to see you at the next event. But if they say yes, you're building with you're taking that relationship to the next level. And so uh, you have to know where you're trying to go that you want to be mentored, who you want to mentor you and then get in their orbit by doing the same thing they're doing or something that they're passionate about, they're interested in, jump in and then build a relationship from there. That would be my that's one of my observations. Thank you, Brandon. So really initiative, take the initiative. Um, there may or may not be opportunities right in front of you, but you, you have to we have to step out of our comfort zones in that sense. Right. So thank you. I love that. Sarah, what about you about, you know, how do you ask someone to be your mentor and how can you be an effective mentee? Yeah, um, I think that I completely agree with Brandon and um, getting in someone's orbit. I like the way that you that you said that um, I've had a lot of success with um, just going in and asking someone for advice. And yes. I find that most people really like sharing their advice and their knowledge. And if that initial contact goes well, um, you can, and especially if you take their advice and then come back to them later with the results of, of you know, I did what you suggested and this is how it turned out. And I really appreciate that. Um, I think that's a really great way to set the stage for the question of, um, you know, if you want to formally ask someone, would you, would you be my mentor or would you consider mentoring me a bit more? I really had a great experience with this first bit of advice that you gave me. Um, so I think that that's an additional um, thing to consider. And um, someone said it about, um, I wrote down in my notes here, embrace your own humility. Um, just acknowledging that you don't know it all. And I think that, that that's been something that has been hard for me in my career is you don't want to admit that it's scary to admit that you don't know everything because you think maybe you're going to get punished for that. But going to someone that you think that you can trust and saying, um, you know, there's there's some things that I'd like to improve on or some things I'd like to know more about. I see that you're really good at this um, or I admire the way that you do this in some sort of way. Um, and I'm wondering if you could give me advice on that. So I, I've had a lot of success. I think that that's probably my most successful methodology for asking um, someone to mentor me. That, that's so great because it, it kind of starts building, right? You start with just the ask of just some advice, you know, and you start building that relationship. So it's not just this random, hey, can you be, can you be my mentor? It really is this relationship that you build over time. And another tweetable or exable phrase, embrace mm -hmm. your own humility. Uh, absolutely. I love how you shared that. Um, let's talk about um, as we are in mentoring relationships, what can we learn from being in a mentoring relationship with someone who looks different um, than we do? Someone from a different background, someone with different experiences. So what, what can we learn from that? Oh, I'll jump in on that real quick. Um, I, I think most of my, well, you know, I've had mentors that look like me and mentors that don't look like me. Um, and I don't know that I've, I think I generally just kind of try to just be around them and be in their orbit and and grab lunch with them occasionally and try to keep it as uh, low commitment as possible. Sometimes I, I 
my fear is if you go to somebody who's super busy, hey, you want to be my mentor? They're like, oh, another thing. But if you're like, hey, you want to grab lunch sometime? It's just like, you know, there's no commitment uh, in, in, engaged in it. So language is really critical. But I would say um, learning from people who are different than you, uh, I think the fact of the matter is that they're, they're going to be. And if we're going to get super real, if we're in the leaders of color conversation here, um, there's a lot of senior leaders who are, who are not leaders of color. Uh, and so uh, just by law of averages, <laughs> if you're a person of color, you're probably going to be in a situation where you're going to be getting mentored by someone who is uh, does not look like you. Uh, and that's fine. I think that's that's a good thing. Uh, you You can bring something to that conversation that's really really special and unique you can also learn something that's really special and unique there as well um so yeah for me i think what you get from it is you get a different perspective you get to see kind of the world from their perspective what are they seeing how are they understanding things uh and it's going to be different than you understand them so if you are going to cross culture or ethnic or racial barriers or class barriers or gender barriers and do that and i've done all those um, in mentors and mentee relationships, um, I would encourage um, uh, patience because they are not necessarily going to say the things <laughs> the way you want them to, the way you want them to be said. I've been I've been some things have been said to me that I said, oh, uh, OK, got some cultural training to do here. <laughs> Might have to share some things. Um, but hang in there, right? Because, uh, you know, if, if you're on this call, then you certainly experienced that already, I'm quite sure. And um, hang in there and and learn everything you can and build the relationship where you can say, and I've actually said this to, to mentors before, uh, I didn't love that. <laughs> uh, and they say, oh, really? Why? What, what happened there? So I said, well, here's kind of what I heard. And and they can say, oh, wow, I didn't, I didn't mean it that way. Or I didn't see it that way or things of that nature. So um, you have to kind of, be able to be patient with some things not necessarily coming out the the, the way it was necessarily meant. Uh, and then I would also say from our perspective, my perspective has always been um, come in with kind of an, an open curiosity posture. Uh, you're dealing with folks who are coming from from different perspective from you. Just because it's different doesn't mean it's better or worse. It's just a different perspective. Let's 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 gain and learn what we can. Let's get the sil let's get the hard skills, the soft skills and the intercultural skills continue to grow those. Uh, we want to be folks that um, can operate in a, in a variety of different perspectives really comfortably. So anytime we're in a perspective, anytime we're around folks that are different than us, we're being challenged and growing, and that is a good thing. Thank you, Brandon. So I love the um, just being open, right? This open curiosity, patience, um, absolutely. And then just really being open and recognizing there are going to be different perspectives and what a great way to learn from one another. Um, Joseph, I see your hand. Um, and so, Sarah, do you, are you OK if we go to Joseph and then we'll come back absolutely. to you? Absolutely. OK, yeah. wonderful. Joseph, Hello. go ahead. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes. OK, good evening. Afternoon. All right. Um, hello, everyone. Pleasure to be here. It's great hearing everyone. I'm also a believer in participating because I believe in shared knowledge, meaning that I'm giving my portion of what I see from my perspective, if, if, if you will, looking at a mountain and what I'm seeing and the collectively I add what I'm learning here as a mentee and as a mentor. And as a as the director or well, assistant director at Gateco Cares, dealing with many volunteers, dealing with many different cultures, dealing with many people, um, have to be, I have to say that the diversity, um, the passion and the willingness to learn about other people, embrace different cultures, and learn a little bit more about myself, what I've learned from mentoring. I have to share that my first so a mentor was not my same. He wasn't my color. <laughs> and um, I learned a lot through that relationship about myself. Mm -hmm. um, and I learned a lot. I learned a lot of good things about myself that I didn't know um, from being a ment from being um, a mentor. But being mentee, I've always I'm paralyzed. I have not walked in 30 years. It'll be 31 years this year since I walked um, from a wound in my back in 93. 
And since that time, I I thought I knew it all, and I can just say that I've grown to the point where as 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 uh, um, being humble, I love the word humble. I love the word having desire. There's something about that individual that I desire, and it's not even about their color, race, or anything, but it's something in them I want to be like them. Um, so just adding my portion. It's great hearing everyone. I the biggest thing for me with with mentor was this communication and commitment. Communication, commitment, a clear, a clear and cut, a uh, goals that we have set out, um, and and definitely an outcome that we look for and comfortability. You should be comfortable around me in a wheelchair. Even I don't know. Sometimes I might say, well, would a person ask a man in a wheelchair to mentor them? Well, they have. So I've had several mentees. And I'm glad to say that if they're going well in life and they say, thank you, Joseph. And um, it's a two way street. The mentee, I'm learning, but as a mentor, I'm I'm learning, I'm giving, but I'm receiving. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm giving it back so that I can get it back <laughs> and kind of give it away to keep it and plant it in several mm -hmm. individuals. And then they actually mentee me. It's crazy that I'm mentoring, but I'm actually being a mentee but i'm being mentored and thank you i think that i've shared my limit of time and um i'm just gonna sit back and enjoy um learning with everyone today thank you joseph thank you for sharing that um the value especially of communication and commitment i love that you shared that sarah what about you you know really recognizing what can we learn um by being in mentoring relationship with someone that looks different from us yeah, um, and thank you, Joseph, so much for that insight. That was really, really nice. Um, I would say that I, like Brandon said, um, there are identities that are underrepresented, especially in leadership. Um, so don't shy away from a mentorship relationship with someone that doesn't look like you, but also don't stop pursuing those uh, relationships with people who do share your identity. Um, because I think that's a really important part of um, learning how to better navigate your career landscape. Um, and there are things that people deal with that only someone with your shared identity would truly understand. Uh, and so, you know, it, it's very important to, to share, to communicate, um to teach new people things that they maybe didn't already know both as a mentor and as a mentee um but i think that it's important the the shared identity relationships are important don't don't stop trying to pursue those um but when you when you have identities that are underrepresented you might need to um connect with someone that that looks different than you, that maybe has a different viewpoint than you in some sort of way, a different background or different experiences. And we can learn so much from both people that we are similar to and people that we are different from. So I think that staying open to that is, is important and try to get both of those experiences because it will only help you become more well-rounded. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, just remaining open, right? And, and I think that's kind of a theme that I'm hearing a lot uh, today when it comes to mentoring, um, whether it's being a mentor or being a mentee and whatever background or walk of life, you know, anybody's from, how do we remain open to the opportunities, to the learning, to the knowledge sharing? Um, you know, that that really is it's key. So um, I, there we do have a question in the chat box and then um, and then Allison, you too. <laughs> Do you mind if I go to the chat box question first? Okay. So let's see here. So the question is, oh, from Monica, I appreciate the organic approach, but is there value for an organization to have a formal mentoring program, especially as they commit to a DEIB journey? Wow. Awesome question. Awesome question. Ooh, I saw Brandon just like, ooh. Okay. So you're answering it, Brandon. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. Yes. hundred percent. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think the context of this discussion has been you're on your own, try to find some mentors. Uh, but uh, if you're in a position 
uh, to create a mentorship program uh, or to uh, help facilitate or be a catalyst or whatnot, uh, or if you're in an organization that has a mentor, formal mentorship program, that's even that's amazing. That's fantastic. Um, and and that that obviously makes a lot of these processes a lot smoother, a lot easier because there is some kind of a formal process to connect people. Uh, I, I'm all about formal. And when I said like don't don't say mentor and try to keep it you know a little noncommittal, that's because again we're kind of just out there on our own trying to find mentors. We want to kind of make sure I like the organic approach because it it, it allows you kind of to build uh, that connection and that value and that mutual mutuality before you're kind of there's any kind of ask right. And so that's why I like that. But if there's a formal process where you can be like I'd like you to be a mentor, I'm open to being a mentor. I'm open to being a mentor and you're open to being ment mentored, then yeah, let's let's connect, please. I, I love it. I think it's a great idea. Thanks, Brandon. Allison? Yeah, I just wanted to ask a follow up question and I forget which which of uh, it was Brandon or Sarah who made a comment that made me think of this importance of psychological safety in these mentoring relationships, because mm. you might be talking about some really personal things or experiences or challenging situations. And I was just wondering if you could speak to that a bit, particularly in the example you gave, Brandon, of um, sharing with the mentor, hey, I didn't, I didn't, that wasn't great the way that you shared that with me or said that with me. How do you get to that point? And what are some things that you think are important around psychological safety and having that, that openness? Was that question for me or just give me the example? <laughs> Um, both, but I'd love to hear your thoughts from anyone on it. Uh, well, I guess since I'm talking, I will say, uh, yeah, I think psychological safety is critical. And I think that's what I mean when I say building relationship and building rapport. Um, uh oh, did we lose Brandon? Brandon, you just froze. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought it was, I thought it was just me. Okay. Brandon, you are frozen. I'll send okay. him a message. Sarah, do you want to? message, Sarah, if you can take it. Sure, yeah. Um, yeah, I think psychological safety obviously is extremely important for talking about, especially when you're talking about vulnerable topics or um, if you are in a position where you're feeling like you, you want to correct someone. Um, building that trust is so important. And I think that that starts at the very foundation of an organization and how an organization builds its culture. Um, and, you know, we might not all necessarily be in a position to establish the, the culture of an organization, but we can do the best that we can do in our circle of influence um, and establish uh, a place of trust and a place of safety. Um, and, you know, it doesn't hurt to establish some ground rules like um, what we talk about here, we don't, we don't bring out of this room or, um, you know, I'd like to tell you something that's hard for me to say. Um, and I, I, I hope we can work through it together because it might be a little bit awkward. Um, so, I think that those things are are important and do what you can within your ability to influence. Thank you, Sarah. I love that. Really building a place of trust and safety is so key. David. Uh, so Sarah, this will be for you. So what are your thoughts about what I call uh, being a silent mentor where you notice potential in someone, but you don't want to necessarily make that commitment, um, which we talked about earlier, being committed, but you don't want to make that commitment to formally be a mentor. So what are your thoughts about being a silent mentor where you push the person, you give advice, you basically do everything a mentor would do without the formal commitment and letting them know you're mentoring them? Um, that's a really good question. Um, I guess it maybe would depend on why you did not want the formal commitment maybe if you just are overextended um and and you don't want to dedicate uh more time to something um then i would say just um you know let that person know that you see potential in them um ask them if they'd like advice 
uh, and and just continue encouraging them. Um, and I'm not sure if that's answering your question, David, but um, it is. Yeah, I, I guess if you want to keep things um, informal, you maybe can let someone know that. Um, I don't know if I would let them know that that there's not enough time, but I would say just, you know, be encouraging. Um, ask them if they'd like some advice or some support and um, let that go where you think it. Where you're comfortable taking you. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, David, for the question, too. I, I think also, like, I think it's um, a si silent mentor. It actually sounds like an organic relationship that really just mm -hmm. has grown and there's a connection, too. So um, so if, if that's something that, that came up as you were um, sharing, uh, asking the question, David and Sarah, as you're sharing as well. So we are at time. And once again, um, great call. Allison was the one that was like, you know what, I think we need to cut down the number of panelists because can you imagine if we had two more panelists and not another hour to really explore and delve into all the amazing themes and stories and experiences that Brandon and Sarah shared. Um, I want to honor time. So if you have to go, please do. But can we just close with a word of advice from Brandon, a word of advice from Sarah? Any closing um anything that you didn't get to share that you want to make sure to convey to folks who can stay on for another minute or two sure um yeah i would say that uh, my takeaway points that i think are the most important things are to be open-minded um to be intentional about communication um to to be humble and accept uh, both as a mentor and a mentee, um, except that there is so much talent and knowledge out there and we can only make ourselves better and our team and our organization better by sharing that with each other um, and not not hoarding it to ourselves. So the more we have that um, spirit of openness, I think the better off we will be. Well, thank you, Sarah. Brandon, glad you made it back. We missed you. Yeah. You're like, can where you did he go? Now? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh, yeah, our office, apparently the internet decided to shut off the whole office here. So we're going to work on that in a minute. Okay. <laughs> um, I believe final words, right? That's where we're at. Uh, first of all, uh, everyone's in the right spot. If you're if you're looking for mentorship, that that is definitely a great step in life and, and in career. Uh, we all we all need uh, to learn from those who've gone before us, uh, whatever their background is. I will say that I think there's huge value to being mentored by folks who are, um, uh, you know, demographically different from us. But I do, I do like what Sarah said. Uh, there is a huge value to being mentored by folks who uh, may be similar to your demographic, uh, similar race, creed, color, background, whatever, um, so that uh, they can tell you kind of this is some of the pitfalls to consider. Uh, you know uh, that are specific uh, to our needs. Uh, that's something that is incredibly beneficial, and those conversations that I've had have been incredible um, and very, very helpful to kind of navigate and be be careful around. Um, yeah. The, so the next thing I would say is, like I said, be organic, um, build a relationship. I think I want to just leave everybody with mentorship is a relationship, and so when I talk about uh, we talk about the, whether it's formal or informal. Uh, uh, however it gets structured or created or developed uh just remember it's a it's a relationship and that's a great thing you are building a uh, uh a relationship with somebody through communication listening learning mutual support um and ho hopefully those some of those are going to be really short mentorship relationships some of them might be lifelong uh, but either way uh that's what it is you're you're getting to know somebody they're getting to know you and hopefully we can add value to each other and that's what mentorship's all about Beautiful. Thank you. Mentorship is a relationship. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you to our panelists, Brandon Moss, Sarah Moore. Please give them a round of applause. And thank you all for spending the afternoon with us, spending uh, your lunch time with us um, and appreciated the questions and, and comments. Um, Allison, remind me, we will have another follow up in June. What's the date again? June 26th. June 26th. Um, same time, noon to one. And um, 
this session was recorded, so we'll share that out with folks and invite you to come back in June to kind of listen in on part two. We'll continue the conversation and hear from two different individuals. Um, and just a reminder that we have um, some great other um, events coming up at Leading Age Maryland. Um, so check out our website and reach out if you'd like more information. And I can keep this call open for a few more minutes if anyone has any questions or comments or other things they wanted to add. Um, we'll stay on until about 110. Awesome. Thank you, Allison. And thank you all once again. And just to add, we did just, well, I did just confirm.